Hello, this is a gingerbread kitchen clock that I've been working on. It has the gingerbread decorations on the top and on the sides and on the bottom. It, the case is made out of oak and those designs in the gingerbread are not made by carving, they're made on a steam press. So that kind of decoration could be mass-produced and these these kind of clocks became quite common starting I think around the 1890s. Um, there's a piece of decorative glass in the door which is quite common. As you can see I've taken the dial off and I've taken the movement out. I purchased this clock from a seller on Facebook Marketplace and the clock ran for several months and then it stopped and at that point I decided I needed to overhaul the movement. I posted photographs of this clock on the NAWCC forums, that's the National Association of Watch and Clock Collectors, and someone helpfully identified that this this model is called a, a Gila. Anyway, the uh, the movement I've mostly finished working on. Um, there are some inscriptions on the movement, which you probably can't see, but in the on the front plate in the middle there it says E. Ingram Company, Bristol, Connecticut, USA. And then off to the left is the number 7 and off to the right is the numbers 03, which which tells me that this movement was manufactured in July of 1903, which makes it 118 years old. So, based on the information from the NAWCC forums, I went online and I found a, an Ingram catalog from 1903 and printed out a page from that catalog. And it does show the Gila model, which is made out of oak, and it's part of the river line that they had of these kitchen clocks. The uh, dial was 6 inches, height 23 inches. The original retail price of this clock was $3.95. And if you wanted alarms or gongs, that was an additional 45 cents. So I've got the movement running on a test stand. I've got 15 pounds of weights in the back there to prevent the test stand from falling over. It, uh, this, is the, this is the dial of the clock. And in addition to the Roman numerals for the hours, it got, has the numbers 1 through 31 running around the edge of the dial at the very outside. So this clock has a, a calendar feature, and um, the, the original hand is this one on the left here, which is kind of banged up. I think it, based on other photos of uh, clocks in the catalog, the original hand would originally have had a crescent design like the one on the right does. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the one on the left. I think the one on the right will show up better. But, but anyway, there's just a handful of parts, which I have not yet put back on, that make the calendar function run. So this, this wheel here has 31 teeth on it, corresponding to 31 days of the longest month. There, I got it to focus. And this little device here screws on to the to the front plate. This little ridge off to the right there nestles in between the teeth of the of the calendar wheel. The calendar hand fits on onto the center of this. And then this wheel here is what drives the drives the calendar wheel. You you can see that it has a, a pin on it. And this wheel goes on a, a post on the on the front plate, and then the center wheel here 
at the center of the picture and again for some reason it won't focus but this uh, the center wheel has a, a pinion on it and to the left you can see the post where the other wheel goes this pinion has 18 leaves in it and and the wheel that it drives has 36 wheels so the hour tube rotates one full rotation in 12 hours and you want this pin to come around once a day or once every 24 hours so the the 36 teeth on this being run by a pinion with 18 leaves on it means that the hour tube goes around two full revolutions for one full revolution of this so this pin then engages in one of the teeth of this and moves it forward one notch so one <clears throat> on the, on the clock it'll move it over one now you may wonder what happens at the end of february so at the end of february this this increments to 29 and let's say it's a non leap year you come down in the morning and it's it's now march 1st and what you do is just you can just manually advance this three spots over to make it March first. That's how that's how that works. Um, the other th what you do to to sync it up is once everything is assembled, you move the minute hand forward until the calendar increments by one. Now you now you've established where midnight is and so now you have to get the clock to strike 12 and this little wire this long wire here with a little loop at the bottom of it that hooks on to this count finger here there's a there's a loop in the count finger up at the top the count wheel controls the number of strikes so this this wire hangs down below the dial you push up on it that causes the count finger to come up and the the stop lever that that locks the strike is on the same arbor so that causes the the strike to unlock and it, it'll it'll strike and you and you keep doing that repeatedly until you get it to strike 12 now you've got the number of strikes to correspond with midnight which is when the calendar flips over and so that's how it works. So to service this movement, I had to take it completely apart. And so you you get these uh, these are clamps that you put on the mainsprings, and then you let down the springs in, into these clamps, and then you can take the there's there's five pillar nuts that come off. You can take the whole thing all apart and clean all the parts and polish the pivots and I put nine bushings into the into the plates these um, brass wire helper springs there's there's uh, the leftmost pillar here is, is a pillar between the plates and then the next two black things going there are control lever arbors for the for the strike side and they have helper springs that for example um, keep the uh, count finger pushed down which is which is what you want for it for it to lock um, the clock the the strike side just went into warning which means that in a couple minutes it's gonna it's gonna strike the uh, the hammer down here the the head of the hammer off to the left has a little piece of leather in it and that was kind of worn out so I took that over to the drill press and drilled out the old piece of leather and replaced it. The um, the hammer arbor also has a helper spring on it so that when you when you push that up when it causes the helper spring causes the, the hammer to fall back down onto the gong with some force. And uh, so that's what I've done. I'm almost done with this clock, and uh, thanks for watching.